All right, guys. I want to show you uh, my dust cyclone collector. Made from a uh, emergency cone and a, I think it's a 15 gallon bucket. Maybe more, I don't remember. Um, with some four inch PVC and a Harbor Freight. I think it's a one and a half horsepower. Oh, look at that. Um, <clears throat> dust collector on the bottom here. So you can see the, uh, the Harbor Freight collector. Let me see uh, if we can see the stats here. Yeah, one horsepower. So, you know, not the most powerful dust collector, but, you know, for the type of work I do, it's just fine. I did get a, uh, I believe this is a 5 micron bag off Amazon. Um, the one that comes with Harbor Freight. It's not very good. So I added this bag. I had to attach it with some zip ties because it was, the port was too big. But it works. So this Harbor Freight collector is mounted on top of an old tabletop that I messed up when I had cut it to size and put it on some casters also from Harbor Freight with some locking wheels that I never really used to lock. I just had these left over. And then I built this, uh, this kind of box scaffolding thing to hold another cardboard box right on top of the collector. It's not actually touching. Oh, I guess it is touching the collector. Oh, the box is laying on top of it for the most part. It's also supported by these two by twos. So, real poor man's way of putting a little accessory Organ organize it's not really organized accessory holding bin on top of the system here so the whole thing wheels around I can move it around the garage all right so the uh, the cyclone itself it's a emergency cone um, one of your standard ones with these you know rubber feet rubber bases the rubber base here is pretty good because it's, it makes really good mounting um, opportunities for your so I got some two by twos mounting it to another platform on the bottom of the cone and I had cut out a hole here so pretty much whatever, pick whatever hole size you like and then you chop the cone up right there and then I, I used uh, some silicon construction adhesive you have to make sure the adhesive you use would stick to polypropylene I believe that's what it's called because um, that's what the cone is made of so you want to make sure that whatever adhesive you use can adhere to it so this is just normal leftover plywood I had lying around put it on top of the the, uh, the lid for this um, canister I cut a hole in the lid to to match the size here and you got to remember the, the cone is is um, it gets smaller you know the further you get to the tip so the the hole on the lid is actually a little smaller than the hole on this um, plywood top and I had, I, th I believe I used a jigsaw and I, I beveled an angle on it just so it could fit the profile of the cone more so I wasn't able to take any pictures of that when I made it but um, I believe that's what I did. Okay, so you could see the screws here I used to attach the 2x2s down to the platform. This keeps the uh, vertical stability of the cone. So more screws. Just drove some screws right through. Nothing pretty. So three three posts, two by two posts, and then the last uh, corner of the cone is attached directly to this four-inch uh, inlet PVC pipe. So there's a screw driving directly into that and it this pipe goes straight into the cone into the side um, and I had kind of angled out the uh, the inside of here unfortunately you can't see it but there's what happens is this exhaust pipe there's actually um, a male 
pipe that comes up to about here that's that goes directly into the cone about this far down around there it was kind of guesstimated um, and this one as it comes in it wraps you know I cut it in such a way like it cups around the uh, the outlet pipe so that way the, the dust spins around the cone and hopefully it will drop into the canister um, so you may be wondering what these ribs are so if there's like negative pressure I noticed the cone was getting sucked in so pretty effective I just took some scrap plywood and use the uh, the same construction adhesive um, that works on polypropylene and just kind of pressed the uh, these ribs onto the cone you know it was a bunch of scrap I had laying around in the garage they're not even all plywood some of this is you know some kind of particle board here and more plywood and they're all different lengths but as long as it goes most of the way down the height of the cone it seemed to work pretty well and this thing um, the cone now is pretty rigid it doesn't it doesn't suck in uh, when there's negative pressure so I noticed when that happened I was getting a lot of dust getting sucked up into the exhaust which is something you, you want to try to avoid um, the collector is pretty effective the, the only stuff that makes it through is like the real like if there's a piece of paper gets sucked in here or a really big and flat wood chip that might make it down into the collector and you could see like the type of dust that makes it to the to this thing it's really really fine you know it's really fine almost like I don't know a couple a couple microns if I was to guess but pretty good so this bag never had to empty it really hardly anything ever gets into there and if it if anything does it's really fine stuff and most everything gets into this bucket let's see if we could see what we have here I've this has been a few months I've been I've done this so first uh, the bucket is elevated a little bit with these ghetto platforms um, so this is if I unshackle the top here the bucket should just fall and I could it so first I have to start doing one arm I'm gonna put this down maybe you can see it better All right. okay all right back to the matter at hand all right so I can lift up the lid a little bit so you can see, there's quite a bit of dust in here. This thing really works well. Let's see if I can see the port. So you can see the lid. There's some hair jammed in there. That shouldn't affect much. Um, you know, so that's pretty much how that operates. Again, the dust spins around. It goes into this canister, and hardly anything makes it actually into the bag on the dust collector side. So this has been really good for my garage, keeping the dust free or limiting the amount of dust I get everywhere. Um, little notes about the top here. So I did round out some plywood to fit into the inside of the cone to cap it. Because again, the cone is just, just hollow inside. And then um, this thing, this is just to help stabilize the, the output pipe that was coming out of here. So I had drove a screw through this into the output pipe that helped it keep it keep it stable, and also this attached this uh, this angle bend thing. Um, so what you'll notice is like for between PVC and four-inch dust collector hose, the dust collector hose is smaller than the outside diameter of the PVC. Um, I think Rockler makes adapters between PVC and vacuum hose now, but I didn't know about it at the time, so I kind of ghetto spliced this hose. I wrapped it around here and, and then covered it with some ducting aluminum tape thing, but it works. And this is the cheap Harbor Freight hose, which is not that great um, because you know it's pretty rigid and um, you know it takes up a lot of space. Otherwise, it's hose. So on this side, this is where it gets interesting. Um, I really started to like the Rockler accessories for dust collection. 
this is a um, one I, th I think it's what they call the when they're quick attachment um, flanges for four inch so you got this plywood here that also serves as kind of the fourth leg to this thing and stabilizes the inlet pipe to the platform so this flange just sits on the other side of this guy and then I have this Rockler kind of swivel um, four inch attachment that lets you your hose freely turn so you don't have any kinks or twists in your hose as you're using it so this is really good and the Rockler clamps are, are way nicer and this is a Rockler four inch hose way for it to get on sale but it collapses so it's a little easier to organize and put away and what I usually do is I just throw the hose right into the the organizing bin here and just tuck this away next to my workbench so these platforms again they're just connected with some screws I made a basic frame on top of the platform here to keep everything in place nothing too fancy just quick and dirty job to get it done and then the uh, this four inch hose is I think it's a it goes up to 21 feet but I got the uh, Rockler quick connect handle this one's it's pretty nice uh, all my um, ports on my workbench use that Rockler quick connect thing and I just kind of jam it in there and, and pull it out and, and it works and there's this little kind of adjuster adjuster gauge to control the amount of flow. Ah, let me turn it. Okay, so if you turn it, you know, there's, it would let some air in there. So I think the reason for that is, like if you're vacuuming and, and you got like some negative pressure here, like this is totally sucked into something, at least the, uh, it would reduce the amount of negative pressure because <clears throat> some air would still get in there. So that's really good if you're just cleaning the top of your workbench or the floor. Um, I do have this really big four inch Rockler uh, floor vacuum attachment and I use this when I'm cleaning out the shop it really makes a quick job of collecting the dust that ends up on the on the floor it's really good stuff okay so let's move on to the workbench all right so um, here's my workbench it's it's a, a six foot workbench with a um, with some accessories and some storage. So I'll walk you through what I've done here. So starting with the frame, um, I did make some mistakes. If you're gonna make something like this, I would suggest using some four by fours for the outer frames. I did start with a two by two, two by four, and, and it started to buckle the, this wasn't strong enough and thick enough, so I, I had to come back and reinforce it with another two by four. Um, so if you are gonna build one, Please use four by fours on the outside. Okay, so it's a basic frame. You got, you know, some posts on the outside and um, around the edges. Again, also another tip is use four by fours on the outer rail of the frame so that it goes across. Um, I did have to again reinforce it with another two by four here um, that helped give it some more vertical stability. So if I was to do it over, go do use some. Four by fours um, if you want to build one at home so basically it's a it's basically a box and then across I just got two by fours um, connecting the two sides every I don't know I just cut it into even um, segments here uh, so there's two main parts to the bench so about I don't know a little less than half of the way through there's a vertical post that comes down and that's to separate the two sides so I really wanted to fit my planer my box planer on one half and have room for storage and then on the other half have my cheapo Harbor Freight saw um, on a shelf there so that way it's flush with the top so I'll walk you through that and then on bottom here uh, I did build in some dust collection ports to um, feed from my table saw and one from the planer. So the planer one 
there's a basic hose that comes angles into the back and then the you could see the other hose comes up to the top I'll go around to the other side and that feeds the that goes into the table table saw bottom shelf so that's the cheap uh, Harbor Freight table saw uh, platform thing and I just have the hose going to this outlet port this is the dust right quick connect port on both both of these so I could just take my my dust collection port here boom now I got table saw dust collection boom I got planer dust collection uh, the planer one is great because planers I don't know if you know make a whole lot of chips and then it gets everywhere all right so regarding the table saw this thing just goes right flush up against the top there so the way I actually built this bench because I wanted the table saw to you know sit flush against the top I actually built it upside down that way I was guaranteed that the table saws tabletop would be flush with the top and everything would be you know would be would be flat um, that's the way I did it I didn't feel like taking too many measurements on the height of the table saw and then making the shelf the right height so I just built everything upside down and then um, once I got this shelf kind of lined up with the bottom of the, the table saw then I flipped everything back over and finished building it out um, hope that makes sense to you guys so you know one thing that you got to be careful about when you're building these is you you do want to make sure your your saw blade is perpendicular to your um your front your front uh brace here frame um so you know you do take some time to make sure that is square and the best way to guarantee that is to also make sure that you're, you pick a really good 2x4 board here as your top frame that, and that's nice and straight and not warped or twisted. Um, so that way you could lay it, you could reference it off the, uh, the table saw table. Um, also assuming that your table saw table is, is flat, so you never know with these Harbor Freight ones. I would say this is like not 100% perpendicular it may be off by like fractions of a degree, but it's close enough for the type of work I need to do. So I did cut out a hole here to build in zero clearance plates. Um, this is just a poplar board, and I just cut right through the board with the, uh, the saw, and the saw comes right up. So here I'm cranking away on the saw. The saw does come right up through there. Um, so I got a nice zero clearance um, blade here, and then I could replace this if I want to with another, um, you know, if I want to make a, an angle plate or something, but never had to really. And then I routed in some channels here to put in some T-Track. Um, I didn't do the best job of routing. As you can see, there's a gap, but um, the most important part is to make sure that this side of the channel is parallel to your blade so do measure many times the distances and make sure that you're when you're routing you're cutting perfectly parallel to the blade so in my case i screwed up on this guy but luckily um, this side was was parallel so i just reference everything out against the parallel edge and i have a pretty true um, rail t-track rail here that I could use for this um, miter gauge, which is, this is actually a pretty nice miter gauge. There's not much play in it. Got it off Amazon, it wasn't that expensive. Um, it does have some adjustments here to tighten up the, you know, the, the play the guide. Um, you know, it's not like the most precise thing in the world, but uh, it, does, it gets the job done for what I need to again. Um, Oh, okay. So, so that's the tabletop here. I do have a T-track along the face, and this goes all the way across the front. Um, and this um, aesthetic measuring sticky adhesive tape 
I call it aesthetic because I actually never use it to measure anything. Um, it may be more useful as that it was, it was actually on the top, but I didn't feel like routing out a channel here. And you know, if I thought of it in the beginning, maybe I would have done it. But um, ideally, you would want it up here. But because uh, the way I had done, I had done it later. I put it here, so I didn't have to route a channel there. Um, so you got a channel. Uh, what do you call it? A T-track that goes across the front, and I use that for my ghetto fence. So I slide, this just has some T-track bolts that slides right onto that. And then I could have a fence for my, my cutting. So on this side is my router table. Um, this is a aluminum plate that I drilled out to match my uh, Harbor Freight plunger router. So you may be able to see a bit there. And I'll show you the router on the bottom. So it's just a plunger router from Harbor Freight again. Wait for it to go on sale, then buy it. It's not bad for what it needs to do. I mean, it's it's not the highest RPM uh, if you want to use like super big bits. But um, I don't I don't do too much like exotic cutting. So this thing just kind of plunges through. You just push it, and then it'll come through the top. And then you can do routing. I don't have any fancy dust collection for this. Um, I just basically hold a hose, you know, where I need to. But dust gets all, all up in here, down here. It does fall through uh, from the bits, and I have to just, you know, vacuum whatever it gets down there. So there's some storage. Oh yeah, this is uh, important having a safety switch. So this is uh, a Rockler, again, a Rockler uh, two-way switch here. So there's a pretty good start button, and then I think this is plugged in, so I'm not going to press start. And then this emergency stop, and this is really easy to hit with your leg or knee, so that if you want to stop something real quick, you could do that. Um, this is great. What I love about this is it just uses a standard wall outlet plug. You don't have to wire anything, and I just have this wired to a big uh, you know, industrial strength kind of surge protector up here and then this is what goes to this guy and then this guy goes to whatever I need to plug it into so this sits between my wall outlet and the surge protector so let me, I'll show you so if I turn this on see now the surge protector is lit up and then all these accessories whatever I've plugged in I can turn on so you could control you control what you're using all right so on the bottom here I just have you know room to throw things and then you know room to put the rest of my tools um, I could do a better job of organizing this but you know didn't feel like it and then uh, you know standard just whatever left over plywood uh, yeah plywood to make for the shelves um, I did reinforce the table saw here or keep it in place with with extra you know scrap it is bolted into this but you know you never know so let me show you my sled and get it out okay so here's my crosscut sled um, I love this thing it's great do you spend some time making this because you want to make sure it's done as accurate as you can. So on the bottom, I just have some upside down T-track um, that fits into the tabletop T-track. Or I guess what you call them, tabletop uh, rails, I don't know. Anyway, so this just goes right on there and really smooth action. So this is why you want to make sure your your guides are parallel to your blade so that way whatever you're sliding through is smooth and you're going to get a straight cut. Um, so the way I made this, I used some quarter inch or just half inch plywood. Uh, you don't want to, you want to get some quality plywood here for this side, but this is birch half inch plywood. Um, but you don't want to make it too thick because you want to you don't want to take too much out of the height of your blade. So, you know, my, my blade could barely cut a 2x4 now. 
Um, well, it could cut it pretty well. I'm not going to be able to cut a 4x4. Four four. And that's because I'm taking away from the height of the blade with this 3 quarter inch plywood plus this um, half inch plywood. You know, obviously they're less than those measurements because of, you know, lumber. Um, so the blade comes up high enough to still cut a 2x4, but I do take away... You know, it's almost an inch and a quarter or something. So I did channel out a T-Track at the top so I could put some accessories at the, at the top. Um, this is two birch plywood uh, pieces glued together, laminated together. So I have nice sturdy fronts and backs. The blade does come out through the back. I did make a... Um, like a plexiglass protector thing, but I dropped, I dropped it and it broke. So before I did have like a little plexiglass thing going across and make it all fancy and, but um, you know that broke. I'm not able to show you today. But maybe you know I should put a safety box back there to protect your fingers. So you got, I have this little stopper. Um, and it's a little broken, but it still works. So this just slides here. So I can do some precision cutting and repeating cuts. So that just screws on there. And it's pretty sturdy. So I could measure things and cut things repeatedly. Um, it is offset. The, the curve line is not perfectly in the middle of the sled. And that's because I wanted one side to be a little longer than the other, so that way I could vary the type of measurements I make and repeat cuts. Um, exact measurements, I think it's like 18 inches on one side and something else on the other. Let's see. So this thing is about 32 inches. And then on one side it's 14 and a half. Can you guys do the math? I think it's yeah, 17 and a, a little less than a half. So, like I, said, I made it a long time ago. I remember, remember the measurements. But, you know, that's how it's, it's put together. Um, so this works really well. And you could, you know, put additional attachments on here to make, like, miter cuts and stuff. Um, but I, I have the miter gauge for that, so I haven't really needed to do that. But it's really good if you want to cut... You know, you could, I could cut up to, what is this? It's about as wide as the table. The table's um, 24 inches deep. So I could probably cut like 20 inches of panel across. And, you know, it's not, not 100, you know, it's not the most accurate thing in the world. I do, I tried to do like the four square method or four angle cut method to make this as square as possible, but again, um, it's close enough for what I need to do so that's good so now that's my table I do have one other thing that I'd like to show you guys is this um, 2 to 1 dust collection thing so I could plug my um, my dust collection port down here and then it could feed into two accessory hoses up here. So this is great. All I do is clamp this close here. I could put like a, a lock, but whatever. I just take a clamp and clamp it so it's up. And then I could run two inch vacuum hoses. And I use that to like, as I'm sanding or something, I'd, I'd collect the, uh, the dust. Or when I'm using the router, I actually have a hose, one of those rigid hoses. Now I'll show you. These, these are pretty good. And these are like rigid hoses that kind of maintain its shape. So let's plug it in. This four inch hose kind of keeps things in, it kind of keeps it in place with just its friction and the way it is. Then you just plug in. Rigid hose here. Yeah. And then what I do sometimes is I, I just put this down here. And it will stay. In, I just clamp this to the table, and it would catch 
it would catch a lot of the dust, maybe 70% of the dust that come, flies out of the router as I'm routing dados or something. Um, it's pretty good. And then I could hold another hose in my other hand um, to get the rest of the stuff. It's also good when I'm using the drill press. So same thing. I would kind of angle this in a way where it captures the dust from the drill press. And then I use my other hand with another 2-inch hose to get the rest of the dust. So. So this thing tucks away into the corner of my garage. You know, I, I don't have a lot of space. Um, so this really helps me save space. And hopefully it will uh, help you guys with some ideas as you put together your workbenches, um, especially if you're space limited like I am. So again, it's about six feet by two feet at the top. Uh, make sure uh, you know, use good plywood for the top here. This is birch. Um, I could finish it with like a poly. I did all I did was put some beeswax on this and also on here um, just to protect it a little bit but um you know you you could get a little more fancy with with how you finish the top and, and protect it uh, I don't do one thing to note is I don't do glue ups or or any assembly on this top because you, you want to really protect this top so I have this false top here just a another piece of plywood. actually this is my original top but um, I screwed it up, so I I, uh, I use this as a false top, and I just put it on top of the table, and that's what I actually work on when I'm doing glue ups. You can see glue um, or assembly, so it, it protects the uh, the top here. So I, I recommend you guys do that also. Uh, I'm sure you guys know about that, but you know, in case you don't. So that's the table here. Um, some other tips, you know, use a countersink bit. Saves a lot of time when you want to countersink these screws. Um, make sure you get wheels that are rated, casters that are rated high enough for the for the weight that you want to put on here. Um, I forget the rating on these, but I had put too small of a wheel on here before, and I didn't feel comfortable with it, so I got heavier duty ones. Um, again, use use a wider post for your corners of your, your table, your legs. So you can see here, I only I still have two by fours supporting this, but I felt like this shelf supported it enough. I didn't need the two by fours, uh, the four by fours there, but I you know, definitely could use the extra um, reinforcement there. And this sled just hangs right here off these pieces of, these are like bike hangers I cut. So the, so this, kind of organizes pretty nicely and uh, that's pretty much how it works all right see you later